Electoral Commission has failed uh, to produce actual evidence of the implementation of the representation of the People's Amendment Act 2006, popularly known as RUPA, to an Accra High Court uh, as ordered a month ago. The implementation of this act will make it possible for Ghanaians living abroad to exercise their franchise during national elections. And five Ghanaians resident abroad initiated the, uh, the legal action seeking to force the EC to implement that law. The EC, through its lawyers, asked for more time to file documents showing steps taken to implement the law. Court correspondent Joseph Akable has more. So it was the expectation of the court that the Electoral Commission will present documents indicating actual implementation of the ROPA today, but that did not happen. As lawyer for the ECJ, we want to inform the court that the commission uh, will rely on documents already before the court. Now, what is interesting to note is that these are documents that were before the court as early as June, but concerns have been raised about its inadequacy, for which reason they had asked the EC to provide additional documents. On June 7, when the case was last called, lawyer for the plaintiffs in the matter, Samson Ladi Ayenini, had raised concerns about the two documents. He had indicated that one document was dated 2011, with the other expressing interest of the EC in implementing the ROPA. He said the EC had indicated they were unable to perform that function in 2016, but they had not supplied any document as to what steps were being undertaken after the year 2016. For which reason, the court gave two weeks to the EC to provide these documents. But the EC lawyer said they intend to rely on the documents already before the court. The concern by Justice Anthony Ebo was to the effect that if the court goes ahead to decide the matter based on documents already before the court, they may appeal the decision of the court saying that they had to add additional documents to it, in which case justice may not have been served. He also said that this could also mean that it means no work has been done by the EC since the law itself was passed. Uh, this was not agreed to by the lawyer for the Electoral Commission, J. Ubuntu, insisted a lot of meetings had taken place. Justin Antonio Ebo indeed wanted those documents in terms of minutes to be provided to the court, but that was not done. A hearing of the matter continues on July 25, where the, both parties are expected to agree on the issues to be determined by the court. Reporting for Joy News, Joseph Akable, Law Courts Complex. And still in the courts, this time at the district court in the car, where 13 persons arrested in connection with the murder of Army Major Maxwell Adam Mahama have been discharged after prosecutors informed the courts they will be serving as witnesses for the state. As usual, the two vans conveying the accused persons could be seen at the courtroom at about 9 a.m. On Thursday, I, as again expected, lots of people made it to the court premises once again to view proceedings from within and outside the courtroom as well. A DSP judge, Amega, who is leading prosecution for the state, informed the court that they wanted the 32 persons currently before the court discharged. Now, what is interesting to notice is that after that request was granted, 10 minutes later, 19 of the 32 persons were immediately rearrested and brought back into the courtroom. Now, DSP Amega said the 13 persons who have been let go are persons who are cooperating with the state and have assured they will serve as witnesses for the state. Meanwhile, the 19 persons currently before the court are being charged with conspiracy to commit murder as well as murder. A hearing of the matter itself continues on July 19. Now, the other issue has to do with a uh, one young lad uh, who had a previous year in the court had requested that the police provide evidence that he was not a juvenile. And now that gentleman, you recall, was remanded into a bus stall. But today, the police tendered in evidence to demonstrate that this gentleman was more than uh, 18 years of age and was indeed 22 years of age, for which reason uh, the court directed that he be treated like the other adults before the court assistance. So 19 persons are still facing a charge of murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Reporting for Joy News, Joseph Akable, Accra District Court. And Joseph will come through with some more reports. So let's wrap up with that case involving Aisha Wang and four other Chinese nationals accused of engaging in illegal mining. State prosecutors have for the third time filed fresh charges against the five. Here is Joseph Akable with the rest of the court stories. 
there were essentially two issues to be determined by the court. Uh, the first has to do uh, with whether the two persons who had their bail application rescinded by the court uh, will be granted bail once again. The second being whether the state prosecutors handling the case will be filing fresh charges against the five accused persons. At the previous hearing, the judge had raised concerns about the fact that the current charge sheet before the court didn't have the supporting facts attached to it. Now, what is interesting to note is that the state prosecutor handling the case, Mercy Arthur, informed the court they had wanted to replace the charge sheet, making it a third time that was being done by the state prosecutors. The first time they were brought to the courtroom, they were charged under the Immigration Act. The second time they were charged under both the Immigration and the Mining Act, but this time around without a supporting fact sheet. So the third charge sheet presented to the court this time around has uh, them charged under the Immigration Act and the Mining Act with a supporting fact sheet attached to it. And the lawyers for the accused persons informed the court that they had indeed supplied the passports of the two persons to the court. Now they told the court that this was after it had been submitted to a police station for which reason they were now ready to satisfy the bail condition. The two persons were therefore granted bail by the court. Hearing continues on July 12th where the state suspected to formally commence its case against the five Chinese nationals. For Joy News, Joseph Akable, Law Court Complex. Joseph Akable, all over the courts, bringing us up to speed on the court cases that are today. Well, away from that, the Economic and Organized Crimes Office has written to the EC, demanding that two officers of the commission be made to proceed on leave. Eoko, in a letter dated the 4th of July, 2017, addressed to the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Charlotte Ose, says it is investigating the loss of about 480,000 cities from the endowment fund at the Electoral Commission. It says that Deputy Commissioner Georgina Opukua Mankwa and Chief Accountant Kweku Ousue Jailabi are the key suspects and are assisting with investigations. The investigative body wants the two to proceed on leave whilst the, their work continue. And the three paragraph letter was signed by ACP KK Amwa, retired acting ex executive director of Iyoku. It is unclear whether the office has the power to ask especially uh, the Deputy Commissioner to proceed on leave. Deputy Communi uh, Communications Manager at the EC, uh, Eric Jafasu, uh, has been explaining further. Not presume any wrongdoing on the part of anybody or group. Um, this is an internal affair which is not related to the core mandate and functions of the Commission. And it is also an issue which, per the briefing that I've been given, is under investigation. So I will respectfully wish we wait and then see how it plays out the outcome of it then on that basis we'll be in a position to see how it will impact the the, the commission you mentioned that there's no bearing on the function of the commission how is that no what i mean is that of, of the commission no we're talking about our internal affair we're talking about our staff endowment fund okay even the letter i have before me is about the staff endowment fund where we're talking about some monies which have not been paid into the fund yeah. Yeah. and therefore it is under investigation no wrongdoing whatsoever has been established against anybody somebody was even talking about missing money it is not even yet established that the money is even worth missing. So I would, I would, I would respectfully wish we we take time and allow the investigation to unravel. Is it usual practice that you go investigate the finances of the commission? Oh, I wouldn't talk about it being a usual practice. I've, I've, I'm yet to know of a situation where Yoko has investigated the finances of the commission. So, so you would say this is the first time? To my knowledge, yes. To my knowledge, yes. How did it come across to you? 
This, 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 nothing personal. So, my my personal position on it uh, shouldn't be too relevant here. Eric Jackbasu speaks for the Electoral Commission. Well, let's do join news agenda now. And today on the agenda, we put the spotlight on two schools in the Yulu Kroba district of the Eastern Region, where pupils and teachers say they fear that the few classroom blocks in the school could collapse on them soon. Join news's correspondent Maxwell Kudeko took a trip to Obawale and Klo Agogo DA schools and reports that pupils are forced to learn under trees. Here is his report. Akame Basic School is one of the many schools in the Ketu South municipality that are housed in weak structures, putting the lives of people at risk. The school, constructed some 40 years ago, has seen no renovation works. Three of the four structures on the compound have developed severe cracks that are yet to be fixed, despite several appeals from the school. This structure previously housed the lower primary. Due to the deep cracks and deteriorating roofing materials, people have been relocated into another structure to merge with other classes. This development has led to overcrowding in the classrooms. Veronica Zanku is the headmistress of the school. The department, they don't have seats. The MP built a KG block for us, which will be handed over to us soon. But they don't have enough seats. So we need seats. And then for the classroom, the upper primary are joined together because the B block is dilapidated. And we are afraid that if anything happens, it could cause uh, damage to the people. So we combined both A and B in one class. A people, Elsie in Foke, lamented the situation poses danger to their lives and pleaded for intervention. Across the block over here, if it is raining, the roofs the roof have been shaking and um, they moved to B class. And the school, which was fortunate to be provided some computers, does not have a lab to house the computers. They are parked at the headmistress's office and moved to the junior high school department where at least there is electricity for information communication technology practical. Akame Basic School does not have adequate furniture, compelling some people to sit on the floor during lessons while some write in their books in a supine position. Amidst these challenges, a structure constructed by the Member of Parliament for K2 South, Fifi Kwete's Common Fund, is under lock awaiting commissioning before it will be handed over to the school for use. The block will house the school's nursery department. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Join News. And away from that, a number of communities in the catchment area of the Wager Dam in the Gasau municipality are gradually getting submerged following recent spillage of the dam by the Ghana Water Company Limited. The annual spilling carried out by the Water Limited is to release excess water from the Wager Dam. This action most often leaves homes, leave homes within the area flooded. John Yusuf Matoda Omega has been there and has come through with this report. I took a careful but daring walk through the spilled water that has collected here to gain access into the homes of affected residents at Sampa Valley, a suburb of Weja. Being cut off from the rest of the capital is not the end of the awards as residents look on for the water to continue to fill their homes. The excess water which is being spilled from the Wager Dam runs through homes within the community, affecting hundreds of inhabitants. The residents have refused to adhere to several warnings to evacuate the area since they are located on a water course and in areas that serve as buffer. A walk through the communities revealed most of them are gradually being submerged by the spilled waters making them virtually inaccessible as those who dared walk through the water almost at knee level. Three days there, more than that. 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 Three days there, Inside the owner, inside the name in our country. Whenever Ghana water spills water from the dam, 
it comes this way. It was opened five days ago by started entering our home yesterday. This is the worst I have seen in five years of living here. Those at Titigu used to experience this, but not again. I feel very pity. I feel very pity. Even I can't go out and go and buy anything. I, I have to go to school, but because of the flood, so I can't go to school. So, How does this make you feel? Do you feel like moving out of this place? Yeah, yeah. Because of the the water, I feel like I don't want to stay here again. But three years, two years, the whole area is flooded, so I'll plead with the government to help those of us living in waterlogged areas. When it happens, our children do not go to school. I want the government to build gutters around here. We do not intend moving out of this area. This is all we have. Government should also focus on improving the drainage system within this area. That will go a long way to help improve the situation here. Because I had near dam, dam, I dam and so ma, say be dam and never see one. The dam and pearl, what's on for me beyond a jay. So, Sampa Valley is not the only community that has been flooded following the spillage. Communities around New Wager, Oblogo, and Lower Makati have all been flooded as a result of the spillage. For joy news, Matilda from Aga. Wager, well, you should have seen Matilda Womaga jumping over the water yesterday. It was very uh, interesting. Well, uh, the, the, the public relations officer of the Ghana Water Company Limited, Stanley Marty, has been responding to the applied. He said there was nothing the company could do for the residents downstream since the safety of the dam was paramount. The maximum water level of the dam is 48 feet, but the level came up to 46.9 feet, thus threatening its safety, hence the decision to spill. He says the Ghana Water Company Limited is worried because it had so far opened three of the five spill gates with the likelihood that the fifth gate would be opened soon, depending on the water level. Act responsibly and do the right things so that we don't put excess burden on government and, and, and the powers that be. For instance, people are calling on Ghana Water Company Limited because of this issue. But it has nothing to do with Ghana Water Company Limited. And we've had to respond and we have to do the things that we are doing just because it involves human beings. But under normal circumstances, if you had done the right thing, there wouldn't have been the need for us to spend that money in doing what we are doing. Okay, it's uncalled for. And I and I think um, it's high time we stop. All right, well, Media Foundation for West Africa has named Fred, uh, Seth Kwame Boating a uh, journalist of the month. Uh, and they, it is a new... It's a new initiative by the Media Foundation for West Africa to recognize journalists who uh, are, are outstanding. And I'll read to you a quick um, information that they have on that particular story. It says, in recognition of, its, of his compelling television documentary that raised alarm and prompted action on the devastating maternal and child mortality situation in Ghana's second largest medical facility, the Media Foundation for West Africa has named multimedia groups Seth Kwame Boating as the first winner of its Journalist of the Month series. And Seth received an overwhelming nomination and endorsement by journalists and the public across West Africa as a journalist whose story had made the most significant impact for the month of May 2017. Once again, congratulations to you, Seth Kwame Boating, obviously a multiple award-winning fantastic 
journalist. Right now, though, let's go out there and see what our man is up to. It appears that...